how do you tell a good fight story when your hero has a mask on and you can't see facial reactions? Uh, as far as that goes, that you know, a lot of a uh, guy in a suits, the suits actors, uh, they train to perform in a way that you know you can see the expression through their mask. So that let's say, just depends on how you they tilt their head, or like even it's not just turn, just it was just turning speed and the angle. The you know you can see he's sad, you can see he's angry, you know you can see his like emotions through their costumes, you know. So these actors are really good, you know, uh, as far as that goes. But then also myself or my part of the job is that using that as a camera tricks to to help to describe more emotions for these guys. Let's say the camera darting in really slow or the camera quickly comes around to see that dynamic emotion of it or shooting the long lens but wide shot, using the long lens to shoot the wide shot to make it make it a little lonely, you know, and stuff. And so combination of the the acting also the uh, uh, camera movement or the, the size of uh, what kind of lens we use. And that itself is sort of uh, uh, explains uh, uh, the emotion for these actors. Thank you so much for... Uh... No worries. Sorry, it took me a long time. No, I understand. You're doing... I'm blown away. <laughs> I have to say, I'm... <laughs> I'm blown away. Uh, or I don't know where to start. I mean, first, I'll just say thank you for doing uh, the podcast. I I've been watching you since I started uh, about, oh, you know, you. 22 years ago myself. And uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, well, great. Well, I, I guess maybe we'll start it off with just I would, I would, okay. love, I would love to know about uh, young Koichi uh, sure. upbringing and cultural influences. Sure. So, uh, you know, I grew up watching a lot of uh, uh, like Tokusatsu superhero shows in Japan. Uh, when I was born, I was born in 1970. You know, the year I was born in the 70 was, uh, you know, the Tokusatsu show was very popular. Or the Ultraman, you know, Mask Rider and, you know, those things. And, uh, you know, Sentai show, which is a Power Ranger Japanese version. It started in 1976 or so. So I grew up watching those shows. Yeah, I was so into you know martial arts, you know, by influenced by those shows. And the uh, big thing that happened to me was uh, uh, 1979 that Jackie Chan's Drunken Master came out to a theater in Japan for the first time. That's the first introduction for Jackie Chan in Japan. And uh, when I saw the film, I was like shocked, like wow, I want to be just like him when I grew up. I was like nine years old. Then, uh, you know, I set my goal there. It's like, you know, uh, I want to be just like Jackie Chan. Then I started taking martial arts and gymnastics. But, you know, back then in Japan in the 70s, uh, this karate and judo and Japanese martial arts schools are there. But not many people are teaching Chinese Kung Fu and stuff. So I didn't get to learn Kung Fu until when I became a stuntman since that was, I was 16 years old. You know, because I knew my master, Kurata Yasuaki, by watching his movies and stuff. And, you know, and I thought that, you know, I was very impressed because I knew he was Japanese, but he's done a lot of movies in Hong Kong. You know, I watched a lot of uh, uh, Sunny Chiba's films also, but I was all somehow attracted to the uh, uh, Kurata action style because of uh, he's got a lot of kicking and all the stuff. So when I sort of add that his stunt team uh, uh, is auditioning, uh, for uh, for new guys, uh, but that was like a, you have to be over sixteen years old to pass the audition to get into the group. So I waited until sixteenth uh, birthday. Then I applied myself, and you know I sort of send out my paperwork, and you know they sort of let me know that I can come in to the auditions. So I tried to do my best, showing whatever I know back then. Then I passed. Before you went to Karata school, yep. can, can you describe what you saw in Sentai action and mm -hmm. what what was the action like in Sentai films? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's, Sentai action is, uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, flashy movements, a lot of trumpering actions and stuff, and, you know, all the color heroes, uh, you know, doing all acrobats. 
then the, uh, basically the, in showing how cool they are, you know, with their movements and stuff, and, you know, the, the big movements, exaggerated the big movements. And that was like, a, you know, eye candy for me. So, like, you know, I was so into it. Then the, also the common Rider, you know, they always do the, or, you know, uh, jumping flying sidekicks to finish off the monsters. So I was so into kicking, you know, is you know, all martial arts. So I was into Ultraman also, but uh, the, my favorite Ultraman was called Ultraman Leo because he used the karate style to fight against the kaiju and stuff. So that's my all-time favorite. Um, but somehow I was always attracted to the uh, those uh, you know uh, the flashy kick movements and stuff. Then um, so, but in Japan, uh, you know uh, it's a requirement to learn judo when you are in school. So I took judo for six years in Japan. And uh, I had fun, but not you know, I didn't feel like that was you know things something I want to do for the rest of my life. So I wanted to get into more of the uh, flashiness. Then I realized when I saw Jackie Chan's film, that Chinese kung fu is the one that I did want it to do. So, yeah. So you went to karate school. Uh, can mm -hmm. you can you describe what his teaching style was? It was a uh, uh, it was interesting. Was that you know he always. Uh, taught us to uh, actually hit the person when he did a stance or an action stuff. Because he's from straight from Hong Kong. He done so much film in Hong Kong. And that was back after he finished uh, uh, Millionaire's Express and also uh, Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Star. Then that uh, was only a few years after that. So he just came straight out from the you know hardcore Samohan style fight sequences. So he was telling me that when he fought Richard Norton, he has to really hit the Richard. Otherwise, the Samohan won't say, okay. So they both had to hit each other and stuff. So he was telling me all the stories. Then, the, then the, you know, so, you know, I thought that, you know, film fight is always make up fight so that, you know, we should pretend getting hit, pretend hitting for someone. But the, you know, his style was that except the head, you know, you always have to go almost flew on to hitting the other guys. So we learn hardcore style. You know, he said, if you don't feel the pain, then you don't learn. So, you know, he or the, my senior guy always wham, hit me on the stomach or the chest or whatever it is. Then uh, I said, oh, see how, you, how it hurts? That's how you have to act. You know, now you know, you know, that's the hardcore style. I see. And so, so how, yeah. how did that compare then to the sort of standard action style in Japan, you know, before he started karate mm -hmm. promotion? Yeah, well, because uh, uh, most of the time, most of the Japanese style, the action stuff is they don't make any contact. So the idea that the Sentai shows in the Japan action club, because that they sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, makes more priority for the uh, clean uh, style as far as the kicks and punches and chops and all that stuff. So that they, they believe if you make a contact, that you can't fully extend your arm or you can't fully extend your legs. So because he wants to extend his legs, he doesn't want to make a contact. He wants to pretend like you're getting contact. So it looks pretty, but you feel it doesn't have a power. That's what I felt. So when I learned from the karate, the idea is, yes, it is. This is, a, you know, uh, you know, to, to, to that's why how the Hong Kong films are very powerful because, that, you know, they really hit each other or, you know, they get, you know, they're practicing hitting each other. So that's the big style. So do you think that that Japan Action Club, now Japan Action Enterprise, do you think that that style came out of the Chambara style of action? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, Chambara style action, because, uh, you know, they don't actually hit because uh, all the sword is made by bamboo. If you make a contact, it, it breaks the sword. So actually, the, uh, you know, like in Japan action style, action style in Japan is uh, me and Kenji, we changed almost completely because of... Uh, we introduced the Krata star in the, like, you know, you know, he introduced in the bigger movie. I introduced all the Tokusatsu shows and all the stuff. And I came back to Japan in 2009 to start to work in the Japanese film industry. Then when I started to work on Tokusatsu show, I was by myself from other Sun team, but all my other, you know, guys I was working with is Japan Action Enterprise. So that, uh, you know, then I realized that, oh, these guys don't hit each other. So I said, hit him, hit him, hit him. <laughs> so... All the youngsters, they got influenced by from my style. So that now the generation changed. So Japan Action Enterprise, their styles have been changed a little bit just because of, uh, you know, all the youngsters I used to work with, now they become action directors and, you know, they are sort of coordinators. 
and they sort of used to my style, they're influenced by my style, or they're influenced by the Tanigaki or the Shimomura Yuji's style. So that they actually like the uh, hitting, making the contact, or the doing the acrobats while doing stuff. Or, you know, whenever you take a fall for reactions, you tend to chase the camera to follow the how he falls. Used to be back in the 70s and 80s, Japanese action style, you see the Sari Chiba doing stuff, but you don't never see the guys getting taken hits and all the stuff. But, you know, in Hong Kong, Jackie Chan, Samu Han, you always show the, how the people react and stuff. That shows that, you know, how powerful Jackie Chan is, right? So that's how we, how we learn from my, my uh, master. Uh, that's what I do in my film too. So that uh, in early days from the Power Rangers, whenever the other or like foot soldier getting hit, we always show the reaction of how he flies and stuff. Yeah. I, so, well, I definitely want to talk about uh, Power Rangers because it was it was, <laughs> it was it was on every day when I came home from school. Um, but yeah. <laughs> my, my last question about um, mm -hmm. you know the Japan Action Club was how how what was the reaction? Did Karata ever talk about? the reaction of the Japan Action Club to the style of action that he was bringing to Japan because mm -hmm. it was so different. Mm -hmm. was the, what was the well, reaction? The reaction of that is, you know, like uh, the older guys, you know, uh, because of the uh, uh, Kurata and Sonin Chiba, they're sort of a rivalry relationship. You know, they don't really, you know, they're not really good, great friends, but they're not really, you know, they work together as a business man, but, uh, you know, they're two, two different styles. So that when I came in work for uh, Toei, you know, I end up working with all the Japan action craft. So first of all, they're like, you know, who is this guy? What he's going to do? You know, then uh, I start to sort of become a friend with them. Then uh, it's easier to become friend with them from the youngsters because uh, all the guys, they have too much of pride, I think. You know, there's nice guys and there's also a guy who has pride, you know. And, uh, you know, they think that, you know, you know, what I do is different, so it's not good or that, you know, so I'm not sure. But uh, a lot of youngsters that, you know, they're sort of uh, eager to learn new styles. So whenever they see me doing some stuff or whenever I show them that, you know, how I shoot actual sequences, uh, they say, well, this is like I see in Hong Kong films, you know, we like it. So, so I get along with a lot of uh, uh, Japanese action crowd people also. Now, what I understood was that Toei had an action club back during the Chambara days. They had their own mm -hmm. stuntmen mm -hmm. that lived at studios. Did that change? Yeah, it's changed. Because of, uh, that was only back in the 70s where the Toei used to produce lava Chambara films or the uh, uh, like the Yakuza films and all the stuff. In Kyoto, actually, they still have the, uh, the guy who specializes in Chambara stuff. But they don't do stunts. They just do nothing but the Chambara fight. But uh, it's getting less and less and smaller and small. But also the guys are getting up, you know, their age is quite up. Like average age for their guys are like a, uh, over 55 or 60, something like that. Because I shot the movie in Kyoto twice uh, last few years ago. Then the, uh, I work with those guys. But these guys, are, they are very good with uh, uh, sword. But they don't take a fall. You know, they go like this, but they don't go bang, you know. So I had to double those guys using my stunt team. You know, they, they come in, do the, all the Chambara stuff, and I had to do my guys dressed up the same way and flying, you know, crashing to the uh, uh, tables and all the stuff. They didn't take enough judo. No, no, not at all. <laughs> so that's a big difference. You know, they don't do uh, the actions, you know, uh, that we had to sort of teach everybody that, you know, do the reaction and stuff. Uh, Japan Action Craft, they used to be a pride of not using the, any padding on their bodies. So they say, oh, we don't need that. You know, they could take a fall all day. But that's not something I require. I require more of the, you put all the padding on the body, but you go even more, you know, farther and higher and all the stuff. That's how you used to do it. You know, that, you know, the, we sort of, uh, we're Japanese guys, but we train in Hong Kong style. So that we got that sort of different sort of, a, you know, a feel, I guess. So at uh, Karata School, is that where you met, um... Makoto and Tatsuro and your, your other teammates? No, actually, I met Tatsuro because he's my senior. Uh, he's two years and ahead of me. So when I joined Kurata uh, back in the 86, he was already in the team. Uh, and uh, uh, so I met him. And uh, my other guy, Yuji, uh, he joined the team year after that. So, so I met most of the guys uh, in the Kurata you know, when I was 16 years old during high school time. 
then the Makoto, actually, he's Makoto Yokoyama is not from a Kurata, he's from a different team. He's from his he formed his own stunt team called uh, AAC. And uh but back then when I was doing the Power Rangers, we had to get the guys from Japan to work on the Power Rangers, but I couldn't ask the Japan action club to surprise the guys. So I have to look for the uh different stunt team in Japan to come work with me for the uh Power Rangers. That's how I got the Makoto to come over. I understand. So you came to America. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you come to America to work in films? Or... No, actually, the, you know, the first of all, I didn't, you know, planning to work on the films, but uh, I was sort of uh, uh, hoping to study in American University for filmmaking because I realized that uh, I was working in the film industry in Japan when I was in high school doing the stunts, but uh, uh, I just quickly realized this is not the style that I was looking for because. Uh, uh, you know, I, I was more keen to, uh, you know, more like a Hong Kong style American films, you know. Uh, back then, that was like a time where the uh, Lambo 3 came out and started on the, the uh, uh, Kali fights and Lethal Weapon first one came out and Metal Gibson did a spinning heel kick and all the stuff. And I said, wow, the how do you start to use martial arts? You know, so you know, I realized that if I go to Hong Kong, I become sort of one of them because uh, we look same and uh, we do the same thing. But they, I thought that if I go to America, maybe I could be different because I never seen the guy in the American film doing all these crazy reactions. But I can start to see these guys start to train all these martial arts. Then I finally saw the No Retreat, No Surrender with Van Damme. It's like, but it's, you know, it's a Hong Kong production, but it's an American film. So that, you know, I realized that, wow, well, you know, this guy, this young crowd Van Damme, he's doing all these fancy kicks and stuff. And, you know, uh, hopefully I can learn some stuff from American film industries. That's why I just wanted to go to America to study filmmaking. So I was in, intent to work as a stuntman first. Because, uh, you know, the visa situations, and, you know, if I go out uh, there as a student, I, I can't work on the industries and all the stuff. And so it was uh, a lot of different, you know, different situations. So. I see. So you started working, doing just stunts in Hollywood. and Yeah, because uh, I was, yeah, when I went there for 1989, I that go to school first, just to try to learn more English. Then uh, I'm going to school, but I also met the guy who goes to you know Santa Academy. Uh, then that, you know we sort of quickly become good friend. We start exchanging a lot of different style of martial arts. Then uh, you know I realized that in America it's like so many different choices for martial arts. So then I started taking the you know JKD or the you know Spenjex Lat or the high kickboxing and Chinese kung fu and stuff and. So I was just, you know, I supposed to study English, but I studied more martial arts more than English, you know. <laughs> so, so when you're working, you're working in uh, these American action films. Um, mm -hmm. Was there a what was the action design process in these first films that you did stunts on? Um, it was a, it was a, it was a very uh, different. I thought uh, it's interesting because uh, back then in the early nineties. Uh, Stanman wasn't doing too much of fight. It's more of they had to pick the guys from a martial arts school to to you know to throw kicks and punches and stuff. Uh, back then, all the stuntmans are doing all the Western bar fights and stuff, so they're not really doing the high kicks. So they have to get a guys from martial arts school to do the kicks and stuff. But they don't take reactions. They can't do all the reactions because they can do kicks and punches, but not for the acrobats and all the stuff. So you know, you know, I felt like you know I could. Do some more so that I get I, turn, I get to show off, you know, uh, not using any pads, just to do the, all the Hong Kong twists, flips, and all the stuff, and then and the, all the people on the set. So so I was crazy because this crazy Japanese kid, he's doing all the flips without no mats. So that's why I got myself known in the stunt industry to you know, crazy Japanese kid, you know, doing all the acrobats. He stuff. must be from Japan Action Club. <laughs> <laughs> So it was, it was, uh, you know, uh, it was interesting because, uh, you know, as back in, the, I, I was 90, 91, 92, back in 90s, I guess, early 90s. Yeah. No one was doing all the stuff. So can you describe Sentai for, mm -hmm. for the audience? Because I think mm. for some of us, maybe we don't quite understand the whole cultural influence in Japan, mm -hmm. because for mm -hmm. us, you know, Sentai comes 20 years after it yeah. started in yeah. Japan, right? Well, um, the thing is that interesting thing about the Sentai is that, you know, when the Power Ranger first came out in America, everybody thought it's just like, a, you know, no one's going to watch it. It's kind of funny kids show and the guy in a spandex and stuff. 
But that's what the adult of thought. But the, or the kids are totally different because uh, for the kids, uh, you know, first time they see the superhero, or even if it's a silly costume for an adult, but for for the kids, you know, it looks fantastic. You know, it's a hero. Then uh, they doing all the cool acrobats and striking a cool martial arts pose. You know, kids want to imitate. So that uh, I felt very, you know, uh, funny. It, it was very funny because all the adult thought the show is too silly, but all the kids were like, "Oh, this is the best show in the world." So the two different opinion between the kids and the adult. Uh, in Japan, it was the same thing in the beginning, back in the seventies. You know, when the show came out, all the adult thought was, "Oh, this is just too childish." You know, and who's gonna watch it? But all the kids went crazy for it. So it just like a. Uh, uh, it's like, like a like you know. I guess just like a candy, because uh, you know, adult doesn't have to teach kids. This is a tasty candy. The kids can feel. The kids can taste it. When they, you know, you know, taste the first time. They they love it. They like it. You no, know, even though you know, uh, uh, they don't have. You don't have to teach it. Um, the Sentai show is just like that. I guess that you know something. You know, it has a message of the sort of uh, the, the 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 vision itself. It's just something that strikes the kids, no matter what. So uh, you doesn't have to, you know, you don't have to teach them, you know, they sort of, when they watch it, they feel, they feel it, you know, I guess. Um, the funny thing was that uh, we shot the Power Rangers in New Zealand and New Zealand, the band, the Power Rangers because of the, you know, the violence and all the stuff. And so when we shoot in New Zealand, uh, you know, Power Ranger wasn't on the air. So the, all the young kids didn't know about the Power Rangers. Because uh, they showed the first two seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, they, and after that they banned the show, just because that it is too much trouble for kids imitating Power Rangers, getting hurt, and all those stuff. So that all the you know little kids who doesn't know Power Rangers, but when they see us shooting Power Ranger in the city, they stop by and sort of sort of start to pretend the poses and all those stuff, even though they don't know Power Rangers. You know, so it was kind of funny to see. You know, everybody's like, you know, if they're Spider-Man, Superman, if they know, it's understandable. But this is like something that you don't know. When the kids see it the first time, they immediately strike in the pose, they're immediately imitating and stuff. So that tells me enough that, uh, you know, the Power Ranger uh, Sentai show has uh, enough of messages for the kids. You know, uh, there's no explanations you need for the kids, I guess. I understand. So, Okay, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was on every day when I when I got home from school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. um, I, I actually had a kind of a semi girlfriend at the time, and I would call uh -huh. her, and we would talk through the show. <laughs> we, would, uh -huh. we would hang out on the phone and watch the show together. So, uh, became, oh, I'm so <laughs> became very familiar with those fights. Um, but uh, so so, how did you become involved in the uh, in the Power Rangers show? Oh, that was like, uh, uh, you know, like a Sentai show in Japan, they change the costume every year. But, uh, uh, you know, Savan felt like, you know, they have to stay in the same costume for a few years so that people get familiar with it. Because if you change it every year, you know, I mean, like, you know, in America, Batman, Spider-Man, they never change the costumes. So the same reason that Savan wanted to keep the Power Ranger costume for a few years, at least. So that they, when they run out the show to use uh, Japanese footage, they ask Toei to provide more footage by, you know, using the same costumes, but Toei only could provide for a few episodes, so they couldn't provide any more because they have their their own shows. So that, uh, you know, the Savan uh, production company, uh, they decided to shoot their own footage in America. So they had a, uh, you know, uh, they started showing that, but uh, uh, they felt like they need someone to, uh, from, they know the Japanese styles. So the word spread along goes along in the stunt community that you know Savan's production company is looking for the person who knows Japanese styles. So that I was on the film set doing uh, stunts for other films, and uh, and they say, "Oh, you're Japanese, right? So that you should go talk to these guys. These guys looking for the Japanese guys." So you know, I was introduced by you know the neutral friends who went to the uh, Savan just to show that uh, the producer Jonathan Zako. Uh, I had to show him that all the you know Sentai you know actions you know I went up to him and I introduced myself and he, he said oh did you work on the uh, Sentai show in Japan I said yeah not on TV series but on live shows I was just performing Sentai every weekend and so he said could you show me and so I did all the movements and all the stuff and striking the pose and you know flips and all, all the stuff and they said oh it's, you know and he said that was something he was looking for. 
So before I get on the Power Rangers, then he said, well, the uh, trooper needs some help and they need to have some separate unit to shoot this at uh, uh, sort of different se fight sequences. So would you interested in doing it? They said, yeah. So I started shooting the VR trooper first. Then, uh, you know, they, they produced a sort of footage. They liked it so that he sort of moved me from VR trooper to the Power Rangers. So... It just happened to be a light time, I guess. I yeah. see. So, so Tony already had an action team doing Power Rangers action as it was, right? And you came in mm -hmm. and did you need to match the action style? Well, uh, sort of, yes. Uh, so uh, actually, producer Jonathan is strictly required for me to shoot just like in Sentai shows. So by using these Zoom techniques and all the stuff and, you know, and but also by American network, they don't allow, you know, hitting the people in the face, you know, or that if the people falls out, you cannot hit and all the stuff. So we have to replace some of the shots from Japanese footage. With Japan, you can hit ever, you know, wherever you want. So, but the, uh, the producer asked me to uh, sort of copy the Japanese style. So I started doing that, you know, uh, I started doing copy Japanese style, but putting my own influence from the Hong Kong style action sequences so that it's not 100% Japanese style. So I have to sort of mix up the Japanese style with the Hong Kong action for the American way. So that sort of mixture of the three different cultures, action sequences, I guess. So how did you, how did you learn then to shoot and edit in a very Hong Kong way? I was doing, I was still, still sort of filming myself before the Power Rangers, I was sort of filming myself also the, for, uh, all the stunt team together, uh, how to learn uh, Jackie Chan style, the Hong Kong style action sequences. So that uh, I took a video camera and I had the homemade you know, home, you know, editing machine, uh, two VCR and all the stuff. And so I had to match exact angle and uh, the choreography with the Hong Kong films. So I sort of practiced by doing that. Then after that, I sort of practiced in my making all my own fight sequences or stunt team and my friends. So that uh, I sort of, you know, it's funny because I, I got a lot of, I don't have it with me, but I got a lot of footage, me totally to imitating Jackie Chan, the Bruce Lee, exact same sequences from the movie and the angles and the choreography and everything too. Then that's how I sort of learned myself. But you know, when I become, when I do a VR Troopers, so I get to do as a professional, you know, so that was first time for me to do all these different and try out different angles and different, you know, camera speed and different angles. I mean, choreography and all the stuff. And so I sort of, you know, learning as I'm shooting the same time, I guess. And what, what's what's fascinating about it is that it's so different looking than any other American show, at the, even though they were mm -hmm. sh it was shot in New Zealand, um, mm -hmm. the look of it, the pacing, the editing, the the shooting style is so different mm -hmm. from American shows. And I I would probably I would probably guess that that kind of shooting style would have been very difficult on an American uh, production. Did you find mm -hmm. any resistance when you were trying to shoot this way? Uh, not so much. And uh, I was very lucky because of during the Power Rangers. Uh, the producer Jonathan was really backing me, backing me up because he said that you know uh, try whatever you like and you know he was that it's all about you know uh, he's a producer so he has the final say for editing he let me go and edit it first and after that he goes he goes back in and he sort of edit you know how he likes it too but he gives me a shot then he started liking what I do so I was really lucky because of him you know I get to explore my you know different styles and different shows and all those stuff and. So, but uh, I learned uh, very quickly that, uh, you know, as far as editing style goes, you know, like American you know, Hollywood films, you know, they sort of uh, editing points are quicker. You know, you change the angle, different ways and all the stuff. And, you know, uh, and, uh, especially when I'm working for Disney for seven years, uh, Disney executive producers or the network people, they pretty much asked me that you can't stay on a one shot for more than, you know, 10 seconds. You have to switch it out every time and say, you know, because otherwise the kid's going to switch the channel and then you have to create the, your own fast cutting pacing and stuff. And they say, okay. So while working for Disney, I was like the producer too, so that uh, I got the final say for editing. So I had to sort of explore everything from the, uh, you know, from editing and everything. So it was kind of a very good experience. So that kind of editing pacing that they were demanding, mm -hmm. did that change then how you shot the fight scenes as well? Yes, uh, as far as as far as the shooting fight sequences, the big difference between the Hong Kong style and the American style. American style that they do they, they they tend to do the master shot, you know, 
let's say choreography is one to ten. They film one to ten for one shot for many different angles, but that it's end up being very very tiring. Also, end up you know wasting a lot of films and effort because uh, you know only you you know even though you shoot from five different angles, we only get to use one angle for the certain areas. I mean certain choreographies, but uh, in a Hong Kong style, as you know, if you have one to ten, okay, let's do one to three from different angle. So next angle three to eight, uh, three to seven is different angle, so that you overlap. But you know you get to pick and choose a different angle for each actions. It's only because the action director he also as a martial artist or the, he also the choreographer, so that uh, he knows the best angle for certain techniques, and uh, so that's where you don't waste your energy, you know, for doing many many takes and many times, and also you don't waste your time. So I learned two different ways. So that uh, I saw a mix match. Good thing about the Hong Kong film style. The good thing about the American film style. So I mix match. That's that's a that's a great point. That when when your action designer and your filmmaker as well, your director mm-hmm. understands martial arts, it actually is uh, very economical. So mm-hmm. uh, the the show can only benefit from that. Now, when you um, so when you were designing action for Power Rangers, uh, mm-hmm. what did that look like? Did you prepare it in advance, or was it all done on the spot? It's done on the spot because of uh, there's not really t- enough time to prepare in advance. You know, if it's a movie, you can sort of prepare like in advance. You can sort of practice and have choreography, do the video video storyboard first, and all the stuff. But the Power Rangers, you have to shoot all this fighting every day. You know, if you go to the one sequence, it's not just the one fight because you know, Red Ranger, Blue Ranger, Yellow Ranger, Black Ranger. You know, like six different fight sequences. So that uh, you have to choreography on the, on the spot. So you sort of get the habit of shooting, you know, whenever I see that action, you know, oh, this one, I shoot from here, I shoot from here, I shoot from there. You know, I had to sort of pick on the spot. So I kind of developed myself that kind of style, I guess. How did you stay so, inspired to keep on creating these five-on-one fight scenes? What were you watching at the time? And what was what was in your mind? <laughs> I don't know, because, you know, I, I just I simply love the film. I love the movie, so that I watch everything, you know, whenever it comes out. Not just action sequence, action movies, but, uh, you know, horror film and drama and whatever, you know, I watch everything. But then also watch tons of Hong Kong films. Like uh, in you know in the LA, if you go to Chinatown or the Montreal Park, uh, back then there's a lot of video stores uh, for the local Chinese people. You know, so the you know uh, there's not subtitles. There's sometimes English subtitles, but it doesn't matter because I just lent out all the videos from uh, local Chinese people and uh, watch you know whatever the Hong Kong movie I can get my hands on. So so I just keep watching all the stuff. And uh, was your was the stunt team, and you had you you had alpha stunts at this time, yeah. right? Well, yeah. How did you guys maintain training while you were doing production? Well, it was funny because one thing I started working on the film industry in America. Then the, uh, Tatsuro, uh, one of the teammate from Krata, he called me up and, and just out of out of nowhere, he said, "So what are you doing right now?" I said, "Well, I'm working on American film." He said, "Well, can I come visit? Because I like to see you know a Hollywood film." you know, set and stuff. So he came over and uh, he sort of uh, realized also that uh, let's do something in America because we we can do something that, you know, no one can do in Hollywood at this point. So that we go to the gym every day, uh, you know, every, every weekend, I guess. And also that we also took the uh, big trampoline class. We do the trampoline practice and also we do the gym practice and uh, we always walk out. We walk out like five times a week straight pretty much. You know, except the days that we were walking and stuff. So that we l- tried to learn this acrobats, also the wire gag, you know, or the wire stuff, because uh, we had to go to a warehouse, you know, hook up a you know, wire and cables and stuff and practice wires and ourselves. So, you know, we were young back then. So it was like, you know, you know, we wanted to practice and practice. So so we we practice ourselves and also we shot a lot of demo tapes, you know, cool. we, you know, we perform ourselves and we did all the demos and stuff and, you know, we put together and uh, then uh, hopefully that, you know, somehow that we can sort of show off to the people in, in Hollywood. So, so you, you guys are shooting at a really fast pace. Uh, you're mm-hmm. coming up with choreography on the spot. Uh, yeah. A lot of the time the re- there's resistance to that in American films and TV because they're concerned about injuries and, yeah, yeah. and all that. I mean, how did mm-hmm. you, I mean, were, were there any major injuries and how did you, how did you not, maintain not, yourselves? Well, actually not during the Power Rangers, you know, there's not major injuries because of, uh, because we do every day. 
so that we sort of get the, uh, trained for that. You know, we were trained every day too, so that、uh, we didn't have any injuries.、Uh, you know, the, just minor twist in the ankle and stuff like that、It、happens all the time, but not like a, you know, serious injury or broken bones or the, you know, nearly death and stuff like that. Not nothing happened like that. So, but I got more injury by working on just a normal doing the normal stunts for you know, other films. You know. When I roll off from the car and I scrape myself, I left all the entire skin on the pavement and stuff, and you know that kind of stuff it happens. But、uh, by doing the stunts, but not on the Power Rangers, no. So there was another film that came out around the same time called Guyver Dark Hero. You did that yeah, with Steve yeah. Wong.、Um, mm -hmm. Was that? I mean, did that film sort of represent what you wanted to bring to the Sentai genre? Yes. Yes, because that was、uh, actually our Alpha Stunts first film that we done as Alpha Stunts. That was back in ninety two that we sort of uh, uh, worked on the show, I guess, and uh, uh, we heard that you know because we know all the first guy book because the guy book was based on the Japanese animations on comic book, and、uh, we know it was made in Hollywood, but we saw the film, but、uh, you know,、uh, you know it was good, but it was not so much like we didn't get too much impressed by the action sequences, but uh, uh, we heard that、uh, they're prepping for the guy book too. Next film, so that we say, oh, this is our chance. Let's go and talk to you know this guy and、uh, you know show ourselves, you know what we can do and stuff. So that we got the neutral frame. If we worked on the guy, ever and、uh, he gave me a number for Steve. So that、uh, one time we I call up Steve and Steve, hey,、uh, this is my Koichi, and we do the stunt in in a, you know a Japanese guy, but then stunt in America. So could you take a look at our show reels? So we put together shorties. We went over to Steve's and we showed it to Steve, and he liked it right away. He said, "Wow, this is great! You guys, do you guys want to work on the film?" I said, "Yes, great!" <laughs> so we got the job. <laughs> so、uh, we we formed Alpha Stance, but soon after that, we got the first job. You know, we landed the first job for the for the guy with the Akira, and、uh, me myself being a Giver and Tatsuo become the you know sort of a Giver, you know, dark Giver and all that stuff. And Yuji also was there and. The three of us work together and on the Giver, and also there's a one the guy named Ken Goodman who used to work on the、uh, Jackie Chan film,、uh, Jackie Chan stunt team back then. So he also came out and helped us out too. So Ken's funny guy. He's from New York, but he went to the、uh, Hong Kong to you know because he was doing all the kung fu stuff, and he went to Hong Kong to work on the back you know a、uh, lot of Hong Kong films in the back in nineties. There's a kick. Now called the Giver Kick.、Yeah. It's called the, <laughs> the Giver Kick,、um, and、uh, the, the the theory is that it started with the Giver、uh, Dark Hero.、Um, did you come up? Who who came up with the kick? What's the origin of the the kick? Its origin of that is that you know it's a very similar kick. You know, you know Chinese film called、uh, Operation Scorpio.、Uh, then there was a guy named、uh, Won Jin、uh, from from Korea. I was a you know super kicker, and、uh, he did he did a similar kick in the film, and、uh, we said, well, let's try to practice that the kick and the stuff, and so that, you know, so we practice the kick, and、uh, so we say, oh, let's do this in the Giver. So we put a costume on, see we can do if we can do it, but we did it, and that was、uh, like sort of a, you know, we done the kick、uh, based on the Operation Scorpio, a little bit after the movie came out. But、uh, uh, Giver was the first American film to introduce the kick in the American film industries. So we took a name for it, but we felt bad because of, we we got idea from a Hong Kong film. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he did he did a lot of other things that he's known for in that film for sure. So、uh, yeah,、uh, were, they, were there、uh, any any good stories to tell from filming the Giver? Ah,、uh, it was a, it was a, you know it's kind of low budget film, but、uh, seeing that we had the freedom, you know, we had we we could do whatever we want to do. And Steve,、uh, he's also、uh, done himself doing a lot of you know, action films too. So that、uh, we had a really good time, just because of、uh, you know the angle, the idea is very similar. That we came up with choreography. Then I thought that we should from shoot from this angle, but Steve came over and he picked the exact same angle and stuff. And so it was like you know it was tough, but it was fun because I was only like twenty two or something like that when we walked in the Giver, you know. So so it was, those were days, I guess. So you did another film with Steve Wong called Drive, nineteen ninety seven, right,、yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and、uh, this is one of my all time favorite action films. Oh, thank you, thank、and、you. Can you talk about how you guys、uh, how you guys got involved in that film? 
Yeah, well, after we did a guy, bro, we got on very well with Steve, and uh, Steve is trying to prepare for the next film. Uh, it took him a while to, you know, get on the process, but uh, he finally managed to, uh, you know, get on the job on the drive. So, so that we thought, okay, this is a show of time because of, uh, we didn't have to put a costume on, then uh, we are ourselves. And especially we had to star the Mark DeCascos. He's amazing, you know, a martial artist. You know, he's one of the best, I guess. So, so that, uh, uh, you know, because I, I used to watch Mark's movie all the time too. So that I was very excited to work on, on the work with Mark DeCascos. So, so that we have a talented star, then the, we get to do whatever we want to do. So that we sort of all put our ideas together and we shot a lot, a lot of film that time, a lot, a lot of action sequences. So, and of course, Steve, he never said no. He said, yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead, do more, do more. So it was interesting. It was fun. I wanted to ask this about Power Rangers also, because a lot of mm -hmm. the Power Rangers cast were also martial artists, like Johnny O'Gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, when you're able to actually shoot an actor who's able to do martial arts without a mask on, mm -hmm. uh, does that, I mean, is that easier for you? Is that, what, what is the design process difference between having to put a mask on to hide the double versus having a competent martial artist? Well, I mean, it's, it's completely different because of uh, if it's a confident martial artist or experienced martial artist that who can do the film fights, uh, it's, it's, it helps him big time because you don't have to hide his face or the you know, half face or whatever. Or the, you know, if he's a great kicker, then you can, ex you know, sort of experiment a lot of different kicks and different angles and stuff. And, you know, uh, a lot of times that, uh, you know, actor who's not skilled actor, that you have to sort of use stunt double to sort of try to hide his face or shooting from behind the different angles and stuff. And But you don't have to do any of that with, you know, if the actors can do their own stuff. So it's definitely, uh, it helps. And also that, uh, you know, but that was one of the reasons that, you know, Jackie Chan got so popular because he can do his own stuff and, you know, he, he's amazing. So... So if we having the guy like you know we had a Jason Frank and Johnny Jang Bosch and those guys you know those guys you know can do whatever you know amazing stuff, so it's it's great fun working with them, you know so as Mark DeCasco and those guys, so. When you were doing action on Drive, uh, how much of the choreography um, did uh, did Mark come up with? Uh, Mark came up a certain certain way because of, uh, we show him the ideas. And uh, he does the choreography. Then when she, you know, like sometimes that you know, let's say you know, one person can kick better with the leg, uh, the right leg. Another person can kick with the left leg. So Mark asked, "Can I change to this kick so that because I can do this better?" I said, "No, no worries. Okay, yeah, please, please, please." So that uh, Mark was very, uh, you know, uh, he was very humble and he was very uh, gentle. You know to respect our ideas and also combining with he was also showing me oh i can do this i can do that he was sort of giving us idea of the, what he can do and stuff because we had a different you know uh, master's background too so so it was great so the the design process same thing you show up on the spot and just shoot no actually drive was that uh because of uh, we had a bit of a time because while steve shooting drama stuff or the action team went in for different locations the action sequence for example, motel. Uh, when the Steve was shooting the uh, all the lobby scenes or other scenes, me and my, and our stunt team went to the motel room where we shoot actual fight sequences. We sort of choreographing and get an idea and stuff. And you know, once we get the idea, we videotape it. We show to Steve. You know, this is how we fight. This is how we won. And they say, okay. So we have a bit of time. We have a bit more time. So you were actually pre visiting on drive. Yeah. Yeah. Then there are sometimes that, you know, when Steve's doing different locations for different drama sequences, you know, I went to the different next set, which is a chop shop, which is, a, you know, like a warehouse stuff. Then we went in, you know, the day before the Steve came in and we sort of choreographed and stuff. And so we had a little bit of time. Yeah. By the way, Luke LaFontaine and Clayton Barber say hello. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. They're, they're, they're kind of big brothers to me. So. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're really yeah, excited yeah. I was talking to you. <laughs> they're super good guys yes i love them i talked to steve also um, uh -huh. and he talked about the crazy schedule that you guys were on with yeah Jai. yeah double shift double shift <laughs> he talked about triple yeah. shift every now and then um, <laughs> I, I and i think you run out of day i think you run out of time if after yeah. triple shift uh yeah ha, i mean you guys are young but the body has its limits <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys do it? 
It was funny because, uh, yeah, well, we were, we didn't sort of go home. And we went home a little bit to take a shower and stuff, but we come back and we slept on the set. You know, uh, back then it was more freedom, you know, as you know, like right now it's very, you know, a lot of, you know, strict laws and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, during the daytime, you know, we film with all the main actors and stuff. And so, that, you know, when an actor goes home, we stay over and we switch the crew because the crew can't work for 24 hours. So everybody goes home and different crew came in with smaller crew that we shot some of the action sequence using standard boards or the reaction of that. Then the next morning, actor come in, we sort of shoot the missing part, you know, missing pieces and stuff. And so it's crazy. <laughs> because, you know, in the Hong Kong film, they use months and months to shoot the one action sequences. But uh, in, in America, uh, like a, uh, especially the uh, size of film, like a drive, you know, we are limited time. So that uh, we had to you know, do a double shift, a triple shift to, to get us on time, get us some time to, you know, shoot those action sequences so and those action sequences are really long too which yeah as fans we love it uh -huh. because they're, uh -huh. they're so good but was there <laughs> was there any pushback from the producers who were saying hey maybe we cut the fights shorter and do more drama time <laughs> yeah well because of uh i guess the drive has a few different versions i think it's a longer one and shorter ones so the uh the european version the asian version is longer i guess the American version is a little bit shorter. So same as the Giver. You know, Giver had the same thing that uh, uh, one of the new line released it was a shorter version, and uh, one on the European release was a longer version. So that uh, that's something that always oh, Steve had to fight because <laughs> that was really my fight back then because I was just doing all action stuff. So the Steve always had to fight with producers. You know, we want to keep the action sequences. This is what it's about. This is what the movie is about and stuff. And so I end up releasing different cuts and stuff. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, everyone I talked to that worked on that talks about how much, dis, despite how hard it was, uh, that uh -huh. they loved it because you guys were kind of on the cutting edge of something. You were doing mm -hmm. what was basically an indie martial art action film that looked totally legit, had great story, yeah. great acting. You know, was there a feeling on set like you guys were doing something new and fresh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, because we thought that it's going to be, uh, because of that, Mark and Kadeem had a good chemistry and the Brittany was, you know, she was great too. Then, the, uh, you know, that was like, you know, we thought it's going to be a you know, great film because, uh, you know, with, with all the action stuff we're doing and also the actor was great. Uh, it was just a bad thing was that it came out only almost the same time as the last shower came out, I guess. So that uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of similar point, of the, you know, that Asian guy and black guy, you know, buddy up and stuff. And so that, um, <clears throat> you know, we didn't have too much, as much expose, uh, exposure as the last hours and stuff. So, so, but, uh, you know, we thought it's going to be, this going to be it. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, it, 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 it definitely uh, hit a lot of us really in, in the right spot. So you mm, can, I think mm, you kindled the flame in a lot of us out there because, Everybody's everybody that I know, everybody who's important has seen it. So, <laughs> um, you have a, you have a, a credit in uh, Takeshi Kitano's brother film. Yes, yes, so, yes. Talk about working with him. Uh, it was it was interesting because uh, I went over just uh, as a stunt person because uh, a friend of mine, Ari Goto, was a stunt coordinating for the show. And uh, I was on the Fire Rangers back then, but the Argoto called me up and he said, why don't you come out and one day, you know, the famous Japanese director and you should meet him and stuff. And so, so that uh, we for, sort of managed that the day I don't have to work on the Power Rangers, I went over to work for our, for the brothers. So I was just there, you know, doing margin, getting squib hits and stuff and killed. And But uh, uh, it was very interesting because Kitano Takeshi was, he is so quiet. He doesn't talk on the set. So the old American crew thought the first AD for Kitano, he's, a, you know, everybody thought that the first AD was the actor because, uh, you know, the first AD guy from Japan, he was handling everything. Okay, you do from there, you walk from here and here and stuff. And and uh, uh, then he goes over to Ta Kita Kitano Takeshi and uh, he whispers him on the ear, then oh, this is that. And he goes back in and do everything. So everybody thought that, you know, this guy's the director. So no one knew that Takeshi was the director, I guess. That was funny. Wow. So, I mean, to me, he's a big star, you know, he's a, you know, he's a famous comedian and movie star, and then he did a bunch of movies and stuff. And so I was very nervous, you know, meeting him and stuff. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, for people who doesn't know him, everybody didn't know he was actually the director because he was very quiet on the set. Wow.
So it was interesting. Yeah, it's in my it's in my bucket list to to even just be on a Takeshi Kitano set someday because his movies are so different yeah, and yeah. his action style. Yeah, he has an action style, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's uh, it's very unique. He doesn't explain that much, so so he said, you know, he's just here getting shot. He just here he shooting the gun. That then he goes back. It's like, oh, okay, okay. So it's like a not detailed explanations. That's so. just that's it, huh? You hear you should, okay. Well, that's very cool. Yeah. Um all right, well, I think I think one of what my one of my uh other favorite films is Wicked Game. Mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm oh, not, I'm not blowing smoke because because again, <laughs> we we're watching these movies growing in a, you know, at this time I'm in filmmaking now and I'm watching uh-huh. Wicked Game in 2002 come out. Yeah. And here's this group of guys doing a film it looks like it's on beta cam i don't know yeah, what you guys yeah. are shooting with uh-huh. doing a feature film with like awesome back <laughs> fight scenes with one of the power rangers by the way yeah yeah uh, what what inspired you to pick up a camera and just do that it was because of uh you know we were working on power rangers also we at the same time we worked on a lot of different american shows you know that we said okay you know while we were young we should do something that we blown away the, you know you know all the action you know action fans because you know while we're still young you know myself i was in makoto yokoyama stunt team alpha stunt and asc we sort of team up you know we also that we're doing all the power rangers for so long we we'll do something different, you know, because something that we can't do in the Power Rangers, hanging off the roof of the cars and also that, you know, really actually hitting, hitting the face and stuff. And so that, and, you know, we become a really good friend with Johnny Young Bosch, so that he's a very talented guy and that he was very, very keen on doing, you know, uh, that kind of action stuff too. So that uh, we thought that, you know, we bought a, a consumer model, but still uh, it's enough quality to sort of shoot the film actually. Then the, uh, we bought a camera ourselves, and we everything we financed ourselves. So getting the locations and vehicles and all the stuff, and you know, uh, stunt team sort of financed ourselves. And we thought that that could be a business card when they, you know, when they come out, you know, show the people, oh, this is what we can do, this is what we can do, and stuff. So then the, you know, the lead actress Motoko Nagino from Japan, and now she's my wife, but. Uh, you know, uh, we got we got hold from Japan. You know, she's very good at martial arts and gymnastics and all the stuff. So, so we just wanted to show ourselves. <laughs> it's not like we try to make money out of it. It's just more of a uh, we wanted to show something that we what we can do. You know, do it all skydiving sequences and all the stuff. And so, were you just shooting this film while you were working on Hollywood productions, or did you take time yeah. and book out? You know, we're gonna do this for two months and do this movie. No, 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 no. While we work in the Power Rangers, so that we Power Rangers, we have you know Saturday, Sunday off. So we worked on Wiki Game on Saturday every weekend, and <laughs> so and uh, during the hiatus when we become the you know the, during the break we go chat and in, in the Wiki Game and stuff. So it took us a while to you know film everything you know. So what was the reaction when you did you did you show people? Mm-hmm. footage that you were working on what was the reaction when people found out in the business that you were doing this like beta cam movie <laughs> well because they said it's crazy you know because uh, you know uh you know we back then we were young so we had so much confidence that we didn't even think about getting injured or anything like that because you know we thought that we were like sort of uh you know you know we we're unbeatable you know it's like uh, we, we, you know you know, when back when you're like twenty something, you know, when you have confidence, you don't think about dying or getting injured by doing the stunts, you know. So <laughs> it was so a crazy time when I think about it right now. But uh, but uh, everybody thought we were crazy, you know. Especially we we worked during the week. We worked on the Power Rangers in the weekend. We're still working on other films and stuff. So. so. Yeah, when you watch the film, you you are crazy. I mean, you guys are doing some. <laughs> crazy falls that <laughs> yes, um, yes. look i mean there's that there's the one off the high tower there's the yeah, yeah. car stunt with the explosion um, yeah what did yeah. you guys have any injuries and did it, <laughs> did it cause problems no no no, no. I, 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 as far as that goes for wiki game you know we didn't have serious injuries you know we had you know there's a, like when you do that those crazy fall when you do that uh the fall from a second story high to the to the pavement or the ground without any pads so that uh, it knocks your breath out. It goes, 
like this, and you can't get up for maybe you know two minutes. Stay on the ground like this, <laughs> then you can breathe again. So you can get up and do again. So it's not actually injury, injury, you know, because it's not breaking bone or something like that. You know, if you take a you know five minutes, ten minutes break, you can get up and do it one more time. So, so that was crazy. <laughs> Who is the craziest faller in in that movie? Well, it was uh, it was Tatsuro because Tatsuro, uh, you know, he's he's very confident doing all the falls and stuff. So he did a lot of crazy falls. You know, once he does a fall from a second story high, he said, "Oh, maybe I could do a little bit higher." He goes to second half story high. He does fall and stuff, and I could go a little bit higher. Then he used the car to bounce off the car and hit the ground and stuff. And so it was crazy. It was one of the sort of competitions between the stunt team. You know, it's like. You know, I could do this. I could do that. I could do that and stuff. So. Did he do the fall onto his head in the, in uh, the airplane that, hangar? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I mean, we see the wires, but we'll, yeah. Explain that. Explain that stunt, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, what were you guys thinking? <laughs> no, it was just that you know we you know we sort of uh, tried to come up with an idea. You know what would look craziest for that you can never see because uh, you know it looks, looks like you're breaking his you're breaking your neck. You know by doing stuff. But uh, there is a way you can sort of escape the uh, the force of energy so that when you do a little bit of break for with your neck, uh, so that it doesn't kill you. It still hurts you, but it won't kill you. You know. So <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, um, you know, like a. It's like uh, you know when you I was when I was young by doing the stunts, if I don't feel pain at the end of the day, I didn't feel like I was walking, you know, because I, and when I finished the walking on set, if I'm limping or hurting like this, oh, I did a good walk today. But if I'm like this, it's like oh, I didn't walk today, you know. You gotta go so, to the weekend and keep working then, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's crazy. <laughs> can you uh, can you explain the truck stunt with the jump off of the cliff? Into, mm -hmm. the, into the bed of the truck. Can you tell us mm -hmm. how that was done? Sure. Actually, that was a, a bit of a trick to it because it was quite high fall. Then if you do the bed of the truck, uh, you die no matter what. So what we did was that uh, we had to do the airbag fall, you know, from Tatsuo diving from the cliff to the airbag. Sort of narrow point. So that uh, that we, after he did a fall, then uh, we sort of cal calculate the area where he does a fall. So track had to do the exact same, you know, sort of a way of uh, skidding to stop uh, the way Tatsuro falls. So we sort of combined together so that when Tatsuro falls and truck came over and just in front so that we can see it's uh, almost he's landing on his back. Then the, after that, you know, actually we sort of did it all the way to the, very close to the, his hitting. Then he went to the mat. But uh, uh, we showed a shot to the uh, one of the visual effect guys. So a visual effect guy said that, oh, I could make it look like he's going to hit in the truck. So he raised the uh, airbag. Then also that he uh, when he comes to the point where the, he sort of shook the truck by doing the visual effects and stuff. Oh, that was a visual effect. Wow, it looked really good. Yes, yes. So it was a little bit of a trick. <laughs> nice. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, okay, that, that's... That's awesome. Any any other memorable moments from doing a uh, Wicked Game? No, I mean, uh, you know, actually, those Wicked Game or the Guyver and those movies are sort of uh, we're getting a lot of good response from uh, UK. Uh, there's a you know magazine called Impact Magazine from UK, and those guys, you know, picked in, you know all these uh, movies and did all this lot of you know articles and a lot of pages and stuff. So that uh, we got really, you know, I was very grateful. You know, these guys had noticed us and we. Did, he does the articles almost every month when it comes out. So, you guys got together again for uh, Broken Path in 2008. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, was the production style similar to Wicked Game? <laughs> it's it's a similar in a way. Which this is a, that was a sort of a very low budget film. But the thing was that uh, we had the, uh, uh, the producer from Israel that uh, he wanted to sort of uh, finance the film. Then a the, uh, friend of mine, a uh, guy named Tim uh, from Texas, that he sort of uh, uh, getting hooked with this uh, producer guy. So that he said, oh, this guy wanted to, you know, give us a few th few hundred thousand dollars to, you know, to do whatever we like to do. So that uh, Johnny, you know, he got, he called Johnny up and Johnny called me up and he said, okay, let's put together some project. So that, uh, you know, that was how we started out. So 
uh, the industry guy from Israel that wanted to sort of get into American film industries. So the producer of mine, uh, you know, he got hooked up with this Israeli guy and, you know, we got the finance for the film. So so it was very similar because it's still low budget. So we had to go to the Texas and stay on the one uh, location the whole time, pretty much. And so I had to come up with a storyline which, you know, doesn't require, you know, like these places, you know, takes place in one house. Gotcha. That's, that's why you did kind of the, um, the uh, home defense story, yeah. the home invasion mm-hmm. story. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, what was the uh, what was the action design vision for Broken Path? Because you guys have ah. you guys have made an awesome demo reel already, and you're now <laughs> six, six years later. Uh, what's now inspiring you as an action designer for this one? Well, that was a, that was a inspiring is because of uh, you know the Johnny is a very talented guy, and now he wants to do uh, he, he I mean he's not kid anymore. He's you know grown up now. Uh, you know back we used to work with him on the Power Ranger. He was only like a, you know. Uh, late teenagers, early twenties and stuff. So as he grown up and he wanted to do more of the, you know, power style. Now, you know, then the, uh, that was actually that was a time where the Ombak came out from Thai. So Tony Ja started doing all his uh, Muay Thai style and stuff. And so Johnny said, "Well, you know, I want to do you know more like this, but the difference in my way." So that it's not exactly Muay Thai, but uh, he does you know Johnny does his little kung fu stuff, but he wanted to do his version of Ombak. So so that was inspired of that, you know, let's try to compete with the Thai. <laughs> so then also, I also liked the, uh, the movie, uh, is it a movie called History of Violence? No, it's not History of Violence. It's a, it's a similar thing, which, you know, uh, he had to hide his identity. Yeah, to History his of wife. Violence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to do something like that, which is, uh, you know, uh, still using the martial arts, but the more, that's so much a flashy way, you know, sort of a combination of the real style with the flashiness together, I think. So so my thing was I want to do something like history violence and Johnny want to do something like on back. So we sort of combine our ideas together and into the broken pass. Did you change your filmmaking techniques to to kind of meet that goal? Yeah, yeah. And also that because of that, uh, we also cast all the martial artists, you know, down South Wars and all other guys. So that, uh, you know, the idea for the film is that we didn't do too much uh, quick cutting. We did a longer takes, just like 70s Kung Fu films, because these guys themselves are actually really good. So that uh, we want to show how good these guys are. So we didn't do too much cutting on the film. As you notice from that film or out of my other films, you can see there's cuts in doing the fight sequences. So that was the intention just because of uh, Johnny wanted to show off what he can do and Dan wanted to show off so that we said, okay, let's just do this cutting this time, you know, do more real, you know, do longer take, you know, just show you guys. What was the uh, total production timeline on that film? It was the same thing, about two weeks, I think. For the whole movie? Yeah, Yeah, whole movie, yeah. Yeah, Um, two two weeks. So we had to stay in the same house for every day. I mean, we, we stay in the motel room around the house, but uh, every day at the same house. So, so I think about two weeks, two, 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 yeah, two weeks. Yeah. Did Did you get your Airbnb deposit back after you left the house? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So talk about the uh, the end fight scene between Johnny and uh, um, mm-hmm. Dan. Dan was yeah. that. I mean, you, you guys must have shot that pretty quick. Then it's a long fight. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was actually the uh, day and a half, almost two days. Uh, entire burn scene, not just the action sequence, but the little bit of drama before and after, including that. That was a uh, two days. So uh, you know, we went to the bomb and uh, we sort of a choreograph at the same time, but uh, uh, we shot until the you know the, when the light goes off. Uh, then uh, we spent you know entire two days, so it was only possible just because of the Johnny and Dan was so good. You know, they could just do a pick it up right away. They can do it very quickly. So, and so, what was your team, your action team on that project when you were designing the action and behind the scenes? What, what, what did the team look like? Um. It was a, it was a, you know, it was a difficult. Uh, just because uh, we didn't have an entire team with us, just because of uh, we had a, had a guy, uh, you know, Johnny was one of us, but the thing is, you know, we we intentionally cast all the 
the martial artists as a cast so that they sort of become a, a the cast and stunt team together then the, i had my wife and also that i had the, uh, uh one of the stunt team guy named tadahiro nakamura uh he's also a member of alpha stunts he was with us whole time so that uh you know again you know a lot of sleepless night you know because uh we had to film the entire day and uh, when the you know, film is gone and we finished filming. We had to go get a burgers because there's nothing but the burgers around that locations. <laughs> so that uh, uh, then that we even that like at nighttime or the you know weekends and the day off that we had to sort of uh, choreograph the fight because it's tons of fights in the film too. So so then we had a one year old baby uh, back then. So so it was difficult. That's crazy. So I, had to get my, I had to get my daughter from LA to come over to Texas to babysit her little brother. <laughs> wow. So, so you're, you're 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 directing your wife. You have a one year old <laughs> being babysit. Yeah. Um, my one year old. You know, he he did that. He played uh, when Johnny was young, and in, in the very beginning, when the little baby got kidnapped, that was my son. So. Because my wife, when my wife was performing, I was holding my baby and he said, ah, Lashon and cat. <laughs> and what is it like directing, uh, directing your wife, uh, who's a great action performer as well? It was good because I get to be a boss on the set. You know, uh, she's a boss in the house, but <laughs> only time I get to be her boss is on the set. So <laughs> yeah, you get to show off for all the guys then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Look who's in but charge. But actually, she's she's very good. She's a very good gymnast. She's a very good martial artist. Uh, she's good, very good performer. Uh, some performers, but then also, uh, uh he's a, she's a great help too because she noticed you know a lot of things. And when whenever actor needs some padding or stuff, or the whenever I need something, whenever other crew needs something, she realizes and she goes up and you know help people and the crew and all the stuff. And so it's it's actually a big help when having my wife along on set. Ah, so, so she's core action team for you. Yeah, yeah. So so that uh you know she was with us you know during the Power Rangers from uh, back in the. Uh, Wire Force, Ninja Storm, and you know, Dime Thunder, and SPD, and those four years that she was with me whole time on the set. So, so um, not many of us heard of Broken Path because we never really saw a, a major release. What happened? No, it, it, what happened was that the, the producer from Israel they sort of screwed up, I guess. Uh, you know, they. I guess I'm not sure exactly if they got greedy or they got sort of a, you know messed up with distributions. So they sold a few territories, but they didn't sort of sold on other markets and stuff. And um, some territory they changed the name and released the film, and um, and that's called Extreme Heist or Extreme, something like that. And also there's other other territories called Yakuza, whatever, you know. Uh, so a few different names for the film. So the uh, it was it was sort of a sad to see, you know, our effort sort of uh, went nowhere because of, uh, you know, the, the screw up in distributions. So you went to Japan then mm -hmm. and you start directing a lot mm -hmm. of Power Rangers and Kamen Rider shows. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when you're taking on a Sentai project like this, especially mm -hmm. a, a big property, Mm -hmm. Whether it's owned by Toei or whatever, whatever the company mm -hmm. is, what do the first talks look like with the producers and and these these power players? What do those initial talks look like? As far as when I start doing the shows, yes. Um, you know, like uh, in Japan, uh, it's quite different, I guess, from American film industries because uh, uh, in Japan. In America, like with Savannah and Disney, you know, we had in the, in the beginning before the production starts, we have a lot of office talk. We need to sit around the table with all these producers and network people came over and talk about the concept and all that other stuff. And, you know, we also have to share a lot of ideas and, you know, then we start developing the script and stuff like that. And, uh, but in Japan, whenever they attach the producers, uh, that producer is the only boss that you have. And uh, you know, he also of course he has to work with the network guy and stuff. But you know, as a toy studio, you don't have that that many executive people come over and tell us what to do and stuff. Because let's say you know, toy attached the one assigned one producer for producing this show, so he's the only boss. So that it's simple relationship because you know I only have to work with this producer to exchange ideas and that's how we want to do and stuff. And he's in charge. 
And uh, then we have to also listen to the uh, uh, network guy. But network guy what, might not say too much about the, you know, uh, storyline or concept, you know. But then uh, one other thing is that we have to work with toy companies because they did these toys and stuff. And so toy company, you know, ask us to please introduce this toy for this certain episode and, you know, please show the detail of the, how to use these toys and guns and so and all the stuff. And that's about it. So that uh, actually in Japan, it's simpler as far as that process goes. I see. So, uh, so what kind of requirements do they usually have? I mean, so you talk about the, the toys and whatnot. Are there, what other requirements do they have? Poses, violence level, things like that, mm. that affect the action design? Mm, uh, as far as that goes, uh, you know, uh, Japan is not as strict as America network because uh, Japan, they, they it's getting stricter these days, but they, they let you do more stuff. So as long as you don't get, you know, you don't breed, you know, there's no blood, you know, spitting out, or coming out and stuff like that. But as far as other other action, you know, you, you know, you can pretty, pretty much do whatever you want to do. And you can, you know, not so much stabbing, I guess. You know, you don't have to, you can't really stab so much on you know kids show and stuff. But, but uh, uh, it's pretty much free. And uh, so you just have to come up with action idea based on the design of the characters and, you know, design of the costumes. And, you know, if he looks like a beetle, then he has to fight like a beetle. And if he looks like a dinosaur, so you come up with the idea with dinosaur kind of fight sequences and stuff. And so that, uh, uh, you have that, but not so much of a, a strict rule, you know, uh, as far as what you can do, what you can do. I mean, there is a limit uh, because of the uh, budget and schedule is quite tight in Japan. Uh, it's much tighter than the U.S. Uh, so that uh, there's a limited time, you know, because you have to shoot sort of an episode and, you know, you have to shoot two episodes in like 10 days or so. But uh, yeah, but the uh, uh, thing is that, uh, you know, it's a quite, quite tight schedule, but the, the crew in Japan, they move very fast, very quick. Because of uh, you know, they don't require that much of uh, equipment. Uh, uh, I mean, they can't afford the equipment; <laughs> they don't have it. But the uh, equipment are much less, and the number of the crew is much less than American shows. Even compared to American Power Ranger and Japanese Sentai shows, I mean, the budget and schedule is much tighter in Japanese Sentai shows, and also the the crew and equipment much less in Japan. So, so, but you know, but but also they are very very uh. uh you know, uh, flexible, you know, I get to do more shots in Japan. Oh, really? Yeah. Like in the Power Rangers, you know, you know, let's say if I do 60 shots per day for average, that's a lot, you know, in American film industries, but in Japan, I can do almost like a hundred shots a day. So it's a 50 shots before lunch, 50 shots after lunch, <laughs> you know, it's crazy, you know, I mean, but they move really fast. And do you so, guys, but you guys do it normal hours also, or are you working 16 hour days? Well, normal hours, pretty much. I mean, it used to be, you know, sometimes that, you know, just to make to make a deadline, you have to work almost like, you know, uh, 16 hours a day, sometimes 18 hours a day. But uh, right now, because of the, uh, after the COVID-19 and Corona stuff, that, you know, you have to work on a, a pretty much 12 to 14 hours. So, but it's six days a week, pretty much. Has the, uh, has a Sentai style, well, you said that the Sentai style changed over time, probably mm -hmm. because of your and Alpha Stunt's involvement mm -hmm. in these mm -hmm. shows. Um, can you, can you, I mean, what has the reaction been to the, uh, to the change in the Sentai it's style? Changed. As far as that, uh, you know, you can kind of see after I became, I came back to, uh, came to Japan to work on 2009. All the other shows I did for Kamen Rider and Ultraman, also the uh, Sentai shows. You know, uh, we can see that sort of a similar style that you can see in American Power Rangers back when I used to do it. Uh, it's a lot of wire gags and some of the explosions and, you know, car chases and all the stuff. And, you know, all the stuff that, you know, which uh, uh, used to be Tokusatsu shows in Japan, they never done it before. Because, you know, uh, Japan Action Club style is always showing the, a hero, but not so much a guy getting hit. But they also use a lot of trampoline, but not so much wires. You introduce a different style. So that, uh, I think it sort of changed. I, you know, not like, I didn't want to say I changed it, but the thing is that I was one of the, you know, I had a good influence on the, uh, on the, the show used to exist. Did your, um, 
did your inspirations change over time as you're going from Power Rangers to these shows in Japan now? Well, yes, because, uh, you know, like, uh, we used to watch Japanese Sentai show to, to reinvent that to the American Power Rangers shows. So we sort of always add ideas, change ideas to make our own version of American shows. But now I have to make original shows in Japan so that, uh, so that I sort of have to also compete in myself because I don't want to now, you know, make that. If I do the Japanese original Sentai shows, I don't want the Power Ranger to make it better. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that, uh, I had to make sure that when I do my center shows in Japan, I want to make it almost good enough so that uh, when they go to the Power Rangers, it doesn't have to change that much. I guess I don't know because <laughs> we we whenever you know we, we used to work on the Power Rangers, that we tried to make it better. When we got the footage from Japan, well, let's do something you know more and better and bigger and stuff, and so that you know show is richer and you know more exciting and stuff. That's our attitude was. So that now I changed it to the uh, when I make original shows, so that I have to sort of compete myself. You know, uh, I have to make it as good as possible and stuff. But you know, over the course of you know, I was I came back I came to Japan two thousand nine, and I'm here almost like tw- more than ten years now. And a lot of new guys that came up in Japan also that they have a lot of good ideas and stuff too. So I always have to keep updating myself, you know, as far as uh, shooting design action sequences and stuff. So. Sure. And you, you mentioned also that the, uh, you know, the Muay Thai or the, the Thai action films coming out during Ombak, yeah. uh, that time period. Also, Korean action films. Yeah. Did, did mm-hmm. any of these um, affect how you approach Sentai action? Not so much of Sentai shows because Sentai, we can't, because Korean shows, it's a very realistic action sequences. You know they use all these army techniques and all the stuff and and uh, uh but muay thai is actually the full making full contact stuff so any of those actions i cannot do so much in the you know, center shows i mean some i can sort of do it but not so much so it didn't really influence me as far as in the center shows but they it, it sort of gave me idea when i do other shows because i also shoot other action films in japan you know so that whenever I do those shows, that it sort of get an inference from other other, other peoples and stuff. And I I, I but, see. Uh, so like uh, like Hurricane Polymer. Uh, yeah, Star yeah. Dogs, um, <laughs> yeah. Shows like that give you a little bit more freedom to try out mm-hmm. new action styles. Yeah, yeah. I have so many questions, but I don't. I can't. I can't ask them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things I noticed. Uh, first of all. As I'm going through your, because uh, frankly, I, ha- I hadn't seen much of your Sentai mm-hmm. work in Japan, and so I went mm-hmm. through a bunch of it. And you know, there's there's the there's sort of like three fight scene styles. There's the mm-hmm. there's the big kaiju battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there will be the the masked fight, which is sort of the mm-hmm. Power Rangers style. Mm-hmm. And then there will be a very Koichi style fight also inside a bar uh, or yeah, inside yeah, yeah. a house where the <laughs> actors are it's very it looks like yeah. it's straight out of drive yeah yeah um, yes do you, do you try and find a balance with those three different kinds of action styles yeah uh, I mean just because actually that you know it depends on the what's the you know the the, the character is you know I guess that uh, if it's a superhero characters, you know, I try to make him as cool as possible by doing a superhero type action sequences and stuff. And, you know, when it's like you said, bar fight or the, you know, he's not hero, but he's a, just normal civilians in the fight sequence. I try to make it as fun as possible, like just like a Jackie Chan style. Then uh, uh, like this big kaiju, like Ultraman, you know, so that he can't really do so much of a Kung Fu-ish fight. It's so that... Uh, it's more of a uh, he's a space alien and stuff. So, so we had to try to make it, you know, uh, if the gigantic hero how he's going to fight with it is working power and building crabs and falls and stuff. So I have to design the different action sequence for whenever you know depends on who is uh, who is the main person of the show. Is there sort of an uh, an unwritten rule as to how kaiju are supposed to fight? Is there a certain action code that you know? No, you have I mean, to pay attention not, to? not really. But thing is, it's it's not it's not it's not written law, but that the sort of a, a sort of a, a tradition, I guess. You know, back in the sixties, you know, uh, 
AG Tsuburaya or you know, Godzilla and you know, Ultramans and all the stuff. And so that people think that this is how the gigantic hero or the big kaiju is supposed to move. You know, people had the ideas. So when I did the first film in Japan, which is 2009, Ultra Galaxy, you know, Ultra Galaxy Legend, or whatever, you know, the movie itself, that, you know, I sort of changed the concept a little bit because the kaiju, you know, Ultraman does all these flips and you know, the wire gags and stuff. And uh, when the kaiju gets hit, the kaiju flew over and stuff. And so that uh, a lot of people liked it. And some people are they, oh, this is not the forum in the, you know, traditional style. This is not good. This is not Ultraman at all and stuff. And so two different opinions, I guess. So, but, uh, you know, to me is, uh, you know, it's important to have a respect for this traditional way. But then also that I have to sort of updated my sequences so that uh, kids in these days will love it because uh, the main purpose for this show is, you know, for the kids, you know, the kids to have fun, just like I used to have fun watching this show when I was a kid. So I want to have kids to have fun uh, so that I try to come up with new ideas. Sometimes it's work, sometimes it doesn't work, but I have to try, you know, to come up with something new. So that uh, because you know the kids in these days, they used to play new video games and you know you know uh, smartphones and all the stuff, and they get to explore you know new you know informations and new you know new stuff at all. I mean all the time. So the same thing, uh, you know, I feel the same thing for the movies and TV shows. I have to sort of keep feeding them new stuff. So, but you know, at the same time, I do have respect for the you know the all the other shows. It's not like you know. Uh, I'm not ignoring, ignoring those all that stuff, but knowing have, and also having a respect for all the style, then you know, I sort of try to add myself the new uh, new style, I guess. Yeah, the kaiju are really interesting. It's another one of those things in America where I think that we we hadn't really seen that aside from I mean, we had King Kong, but it was mm -hmm. always King Kong versus the world. This idea yeah. of King Kong versus Godzilla uh -huh. was sort of novel for us. Yeah. Um, can you? explain kaiju and mm -hmm. what they represent <laughs> it's it's a difficult question i guess but uh, you know because you know the godzilla was introduced way you know years before i was born so when i was born godzilla is already there then uh you know so that and also ultraman was also produced before i was born was in the 60s so that it was like you know since day I was born, you know, the kaiju was very popular in Japan. So that it didn't feel like uh, the kaiju was like something very special because it's it's always there, you know, when I grew up. You know, I look at my photo books and, you know, I look at the, my, when I was baby pictures and stuff, all my baby pictures, I'm striking Ultraman pose or the Kamen Lila pose and stuff. And the picture is still black and white. <laughs> so so that uh, I guess the part of the culture in Japan but uh, uh, you know, I guess that you know American filmmakers uh, also that uh, they love the kaiju film in you know, the Pacific Rim and all other movies, and you know they invent they invent the kaiju and you know become the you know the big budget kaiju film, and so so I guess there's not really set rule for it, you know, because uh, everybody can you know take the ideas from that, you know, reinvent themselves and you know make it better or make it good or you know for whatever fits to the uh, to the time. I think so. Going back to the uh, the more Sentai style action, mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of these fights they take place in these sort of open areas. Every every now and then you have a table or a barrel. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And I know, I know that if there's a barrel there, one of mm -hmm. Koichi's guys is going to hit that barrel really hard. <laughs> yes. That barrel is going to get destroyed. Yeah. But when you have just these flat open areas, as a choreographer, uh, core, yeah. yeah. Like as a choreographer, my mm -hmm. mind draws a blank, <laughs> kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah, area. Yeah. Like I don't know what to paint with if I don't have any <laughs> walls. I don't have a building. How do you? First of all, do you push back and you try and put? elements into the environment and second how do you keep on designing action in these open areas uh it's like um well because of if you if you think about the action only for like a, a horizontal way or like a 2d elements then the, uh you run out of idea but the, i always come up with the idea of the uh the vertical or the three-dimensional way so that by using wire or trumpering or whatever, so that whenever it's fight like this, you know, sometimes the camera goes up and down, or sometimes the you know uh, the power engine goes up and down and stuff. So it's not just the one flat area. 
So I use all these different, you know, angles and also the uh, uh, three dimensional uh, way of thinking of the design of fight sequences. Uh, you know, if it's, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, realistic film of the, you know, policemen or cop fighting against the, the thugs and stuff like that, then it's a different story. But the superhero wise, that you can still jump higher than normal human, and you can do the, you know, laser beams or the, you know, shock wave and all the stuff, and that could add more to the uh, just the uh, straight fight sequence, just doing nothing but the flat ground. So, so that 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 is, I guess, critical in the design process is understanding mm -hmm. the weapons, understanding. I guess the hierarchy of characters, who's the strong one, who's the fast yep. one, mm -hmm. are those conversations, are, are those situations where you have input or is that already decided by the property? No, 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 I, I do have input. I do have input, yes, yeah, yeah. As far as, uh, you know, what I want to do, what I want to do, and the way I want to do and stuff, and yeah, yeah. How have suits changed over the years from your days of doing live shows <laughs> to Power Rangers? I mean, I've, I've put a suit on a couple of times. I did an Ultraman yeah. show one time. And yeah. when I had to do one fall, I fell on my head. Yeah. <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally I could do this, but I fell on my head. Um, what was it like then versus suits now? It's now, uh, it's not a huge difference. Uh, but the, still, that you know, the material is getting better. Let's say the Power Rangers spandex material is getting better, and also the uh, and uh, uh, the common lighter wise, that uh, you know, their suit itself is like uh, thinner, but you can have a stretch. It doesn't have too much wrinkles and stuff. And as far as all this armor, you know, it's not super heavy, but uh, it's it's more it's fr more friendly to do you the know, folds and flips and all the stuff and. So the uh, material is improving so much. And as for Ultraman, you know, the base of wetsuits for, uh, you know, diving wetsuits, you know, thinner materials and also different way of painting so that it doesn't get too stiff. Sometimes when you put too much paint on it, it's to get too stiff, you can lay the arm up and stuff. But now, the, you know, different paint they use or the different materials they use for wetsuits, uh, it's getting better, but it's not, you know, the completely different, you know, because, uh, you know, the other suits existed 30 years ago and suits existed now these days it doesn't have that much of difference so so that's why the i guess the all the you know american big film they do all the cg you know <laughs> i guess the iron man and you know all these characters that you know they don't really do guy in the suits action they do more of a uh, computer graphics and stuff but unfortunately, in Japan, there's not the budget and schedule wise, so you can't do all this stuff in the CG. So that we have to sort of, uh, you know, reinvent uh, materials or try out different materials and, you know, paints and whatever to make it, you know, improvement. But it's a slow improvement compared to all other, you know, technical mm -hmm. stuff. So. And, and how then do you, um, how do you design wire stunts for these suits then? Well, uh, you know, it's good in a way right now. So that uh, for computer graphic, they can erase that wire because it used to be we have to use a thin wire or the painter wire or the broken cable. And so we used to so design a, a light so that it doesn't have to backlight the cables and stuff. And so now we don't have to care too much uh, these days. So that uh, as, as far as the wire goes, even though it sticks up from costume a little bit, you know, used to be you have to really make it super tight so it doesn't stick up from costumes. So right now, even the six from costumes, you can paint it out afterwards. So that, as far as that goes, make it much easier, much quicker. Join the guy with Dark Hero was very, very difficult because, you know, we didn't have the, uh, you know, the technique to erase the wire with CG. And the CG was super expensive back then, so. And and what about masks? Are uh, do they do they inhibit falling? Because every time you know you you guys are doing really crazy falls in Power yeah. Rangers all the way back then also, um, yeah. But it is different doing a fall with a mask on, isn't it? Yeah, but as far as that goes, it doesn't have too much improvement as far as the eyesight goes. You know, it's still quite the same. So that you just have to get used to it, because you know these guys they'll put the mask on every day, doing all the flips and fights and all the stuff, even though you can't really see too well. But they get used to seeing it with from that that skinny tiny hole. So that uh, it's that as far as that goes, it has to be an everyday training to get used to working with mask. Yeah. Does that affect the action design then? Because if you're if you need peripheral vision, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how can you design action for that? 
it's a, it's a diff, it's different because uh, let's say you know, sometimes you can't do too much of a fast hand motion combinations because it, you have to sort of make eye contact to do that. But if you can't see it too well, you can't need to do too much of it. So, but the thing is, you know, I mean, these guys like, who perform in costume, we call in Japan, they say uh, suits actors. Uh, these guys, <clears throat> they do quite amazing because, uh, you know, even the limited vision, uh, they can still get an idea of the, what's going on. So, so it's a different skill, I think. It's not just a fight skill, it's just more of a, you know, a uh, different skill, you know, they develop, I think. It would probably be very tactile and very memory based, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to feel. <laughs> yeah, that would change kind of how you move, I would think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you tell a good fight story when your hero has a mask on and you can't see facial reactions? Uh, as far as that goes, that, you know, a lot of a guy in a suit, the suits actors, uh, they train to perform in a way that, you know, you can see the expressions through their mask. So that let's say just depends on how you they tilt their head, or like even it's not just turn of just it's just turning speed and the angle. The you know you can see he's sad, you can see he's angry, you know you can see his like emotions through their costumes, you know. So these actors are really good, you know, uh, as far as that goes. But then also myself or my part of job is that using that as a camera tricks to to help to describe more emotions for these guys. Let's say the camera darting in it is slow or the camera quickly comes around to see that dynamic emotion of it or shooting the long lens but wide shot, using the long lens to shoot the wide shot to make it make it a little lonely, you know, and stuff. And so combination of the their acting also the uh, uh, camera movement or the, the size of uh, what kind of lens we use. And that itself is sort of uh, uh, explains uh, uh, the emotion for these actors. It almost sounds like um, theater, like no theater. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a relationship between these suit actors and no theater? I know it, that goes way back, but <laughs> uh, it's it's a uh, it's a you know like uh, kabuki and no uh, those things uh, uh, came down to the uh, chambara films and stuff. And Chambara film came down to the uh, Tokusatsu superhero shows. So it's all related, you know, like uh, whenever they do that, you know, strike pose, like, you know, Kabuki strike a pose, that sort of, but you can see the resemble of that, you know, when the power just strike a pose, you know, same thing. It's not just a fighting pose, but it's more of a showing a flashy pose, you know. So that comes from a no a Kabuki, you know, sort of came down to the uh, Tokusatsu, I think. So sort of, sort of part of the tradition, I guess. China has sort of a similar lineage except yeah. it has a different result uh mm -hmm, china, mm -hmm. china has what's called nuo theater which yeah is probably related it also has masks it's also about mm -hmm. exorcisms and it's very mm -hmm. sacred theater and then they mm -hmm. have of course beijing and southern opera uh, mm -hmm. and then that goes down into their action style yeah um but their head movements are very quick they snap uh -huh. they snap into uh -huh. place um do you have any thoughts about why you have these very different movement styles between this the Hong Kong just if you were to just look at a Hong Kong body or like a or like a wushu performer for example yeah. the very mm -hmm. different kind of body movement versus a kabuki slash yeah. you know yeah. chambara uh, chambara stuntman movement yeah. style yeah well i mean it's just all dip uh, i guess it's a cultural difference i guess and uh, uh I mean, the concept is similar, right? But the movement is completely different, like you said. So that, uh, uh, mm -hmm. like in China, the Kung Fu is, you know, like a Nozan Kung Fu is, is more of a leaping, jumping and, you know, high jumps and, you know, high kicks and stuff. And Southern Kung Fu is more of a, a, a very powerful style. It's just because of a, a nose, you know, when they'll fight, uh, they fight in the flat ground. And also a lot of times they, they take, they light a hose to fight. So they have to hit the people, opponents in higher places. But they have to develop in the skill that where you kick the high or you do jump up and kick and stuff. But southern part of China is in, next to the oceans. So a lot of time when you fight, you fight on the boat. So that you have to plant your leg on the you know ground or the boat. You have to use upper body to fight and stuff. So that that's sort of a you know a big difference between northern kung fu and southern kung fu. Is different is is depends on the their uh, you know, surroundings and stuff. So I guess that you know cultural difference affecting just like that for the uh, traditional this uh, no kabuki or the chinese opera and stuff 
I mean, that, you know, you can see the Hong Kong films that they're, you know, the Jackie and someone, those guys, they're all from an uh, opera team. So that you can see the acting too. Like, mm-hmm. You know, that kind of stuff is, you know, the tradition from acting from uh, uh, operas. So the same thing, the Sentai show, it's a uh, kabuki, like, oh, you know, that kind of stuff. Sentai is also like, oh, that, you know, that kind of stuff is coming from that that background. Mm. So, so that, uh, so I guess it's, it's a, you know, both are, like sort of similar thing, you know, I think, but they just uh, depends on how you express and how you, you know, uh, you know, the culture difference it shows up a lot, I think. Like Chinese people, they're more active when they talk, they use a lot of hand gestures and stuff. And Japanese people, they're more like, a, you know, I guess quiet or they don't really do that movements when they talk. So. Do you know why? I'm really I don't inter- know. I'm really interested why this why this happens. I, I do this a I have, lot. I, you know, I, I, mean, I have I, no idea. I have no idea. I mean, you know, I was born in Japan, but you know, I grew up in America, and uh, you know, I had a lot of friends from uh, or Asian or Asian countries and learning kung fu and all the stuff, and so I sort of mix match a lot of different things, so that. You know, I'm not really a good example of being Japanese. <laughs> You're sort of a cross culture like Japanese, yes. Hong Kong, and uh, American. Yes, yes. Uh, do you think that there's some kind of influence from um, samurai culture on that movement style in Japan? Well, as far as that goes, that you know, um, uh, you know, samurai movement, the sword movement, is sort of a similar to the Aikido's footsteps, as far. As and making the circles and stuff and you know and also that uh you don't you know when you turn and move you don't sort of bounce up and down you know that sort of thing goes down from the uh traditional kabuki and stuff to the karate judo aikido and martial arts and that sort of comes down to the uh, all other you know sentai stuff too you know like uh like uh, you know western boxing you bounce up and down up and down so but if you see the karate aikido they don't do up and down at all you know they always keep the same you know, I used to, when I used to practice, you know, Japanese martial arts, they used to hit me whenever I move like this. So. <clears throat> I'm trying to duck down under your, under your heavy. <laughs> 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 so it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, that's about the great about the Bruce Lee is that, you know, he learned, the, you know, uh, Chinese style, but when he went to America, you know, he import himself a lot of Western styles and he mix match, make the Jeet Do. So that's the great thing about the, his, his philosophy, you know, because whatever, you know, it's, he doesn't have to stick with the one style, you know, he sort of incorporate different styles to make his own style. So that's what I liked about Jeet Kune Do and so the Bruce Lee's concept. Mm. So, so you, is that, is that sort of like the Karata promotion style also where, you know, you, he's, he's mixed this Japanese, he really mixed kind of a Japanese flavor mm-hmm. with this Hong Kong timing yeah. reactions did he yeah. incorporate up and down movement as well uh no he he did a, he didn't he did it but not too much but because my master he doesn't study too much of a boxing and stuff so i mean he does he do, he does karate aikido and jujitsu and stuff but, but he went to hong kong to learn all the kung fu to compete with these guys and so that back then uh they didn't introduce the western style until the you know, western style only introduced was 86 or 87, like a Meals on Wheel. That was a fun when the Jackie fought the Benny Yukide, and he first time he pauses like this. Up to then, it's all, you know, the Kung Fu stuff. So, so that it was a big uh, evolution when the uh, uh, Meals on Wheel came out. We all shocked and surprised. Wow, this is different. You know, when this is how Jackie Chan started posing like this. And so everybody imitated, and all the stunt team was imitating like this. And so, so Mules on Wheel was like a big, big, big surprise and shock. So, so you uh, you actually worked with Karatas on on um, yeah. on was it Black Fox? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you directed this film, did the action mm-hmm. on it. Uh, what was it mm-hmm. like directing your? Uh, <laughs> your it was very boom, 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 like this, because because uh, uh, no matter how what I became. Whenever I, you know, see him face to face, I sort of become 16 years old again. It's like, I, yes, yes, yes. Then I was directing, talking to these guys, but the, my master called me Sakamoto from far away. Okay, okay, wait, hi, hi. You know, like this. So, so you know, he sort of reminds me when I was 16 years old because I can't help it because that's how I started out. You know, under him, I was there almost like you know every day. So, so. 
I mean, I still go up and see him because he calls me up, me and Tanigaki or the Yuji Shimomura and stuff. And we go up to his place about, you know, once or twice a year or so, you know, we see each other and we say hi to Sensei and stuff. And I mean, he's very, very happy because all his pupils, you know, ourselves is, you know, we sort of work in a lot of different, you know, films and stuff internationally. So, so he's very happy. So. I mean, good to see him happy, you know. What is what has his reaction been to your body of work? Well, he's he's uh, very very proud because uh, you know, like uh, whenever I mean, you know, you know, he see a uh, Tanigaki talks about the Donnie and all the film he does, and then he uh, talks about me talking. You know, he hears he hears me talking about the films, and I also use his students a lot my film too. So that uh, you know, he's very very proud. Yeah, a lot of us really. You know, look up to him uh, because, uh, first of all, he, because he was so successful in Hong Kong mm -hmm. and became, mm -hmm. you know, a star in yeah, Hong Kong. Yeah, um, yeah. Probably also it helped that he could speak the language. Uh, mm -hmm. It seemed like mm -hmm. he learned the language somewhat. Yeah. Uh, but I think it inspired a lot of us to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to try our hand at, you know, mm -hmm. either going over there um, or just doing that style in our mm -hmm. own country. And mm -hmm, that's what I think mm -hmm. is so interesting about his work, about your work, because then you, yeah. you sort of brought it, you sort of took the Hong Kong style from him and then brought it to America. Uh -huh. And a lot of us now in America, you know, we replicate that in the indie world and we take it everywhere else, too. <laughs> so it's this sort of crazy family tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny, like, uh, you know, like a uh, chat. Starsky, you know, from uh, John Wick, and you know, we used to work together, and as a, like a like lower key stunt persons, you know, we we did a movie, you know, a couple of movies together and stuff, and you know, it's kind of funny to see because you know, now he's become big time, you know, doing John Wick and all the stuff, and David Leach, same thing, you know, we used to be uh, working together as a stunt person, getting hit at the same time together and stuff, and so it's interesting. <laughs> so. Can you describe the current situation in the mm -hmm. Japanese action film industry? Well, uh, as far as action, you know, industry goes, it's getting like sort of a uh, slowing, not slowing down, but the, uh, um, actually the stunt performers. Because back in you know my days, we had uh, the goal, like a Jackie Chan. You know, I want to be like him. We had a we had a goal to you know achieve, so that we you know made an effort, no matter what it takes. I want to be like him. But right now in Japan, you know, there's no goal. There's no action star in Japan. So it's you know like it's like a, they don't have a like a you know like a symbol you know of the how you want to be. And also that as far as the, the pay wise, it's not great in Japan doing the stunts. So in America, if you work on a couple of different films, you can get a house with a pool, or you can drive in a Porsche and a Ferrari and all the stuff. And, you know, my stunt guys that they do, is, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, they work on a film, but they also get, you know, a lot of uh, money to, you know, secure their lives and stuff. But in Japan, uh, somehow the stunt industry in Japan is still lower key so that there's not much, there's not much pay in, in the stunts. So that uh, you almost have to work every day to survive yourself. And sometimes if you don't work in the industry, you have to get a part-time job, and, you know, it's still. So so that as far as that goes, uh, we are lucky of youngsters, you know, coming into the uh, stunt industry in Japan because uh, there's no uh, goal to it. Because uh, if someone become, you, if you become rich, people say, I want to be doing the stunt, but I want to be rich. But there's no rich stunt guys in Japan. <laughs> and uh, and uh, there's not star in Japan. Like, uh, you know, Sato Takeru from uh, Ruroni Kenshin, he's a star, but he's not the action star. He does action movies, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, he's not Jackie Chan. So so if you have someone like a Jackie Chan, then, the, you know, we can have uh, all the young kids going, like, oh, I want to be just like him and stuff. So it's it's less and less. It's hard to find a good stunt person in Japan in the young guys now. A lot of uh, active stunt guys in Japan, they're like uh, late 30s and 40s now. So so that's something we talked about, you know, Shimomura and, you know, Tanigaki also, you know, we talk about, we have to sort of set the rules that, you know, we have to make a film where everybody wanted to follow our footsteps, you know, just like we follow Jackie Chan's footsteps, so. I mean, you would probably see the same situation if you were to go to Hong Kong right now. Yeah, yeah. The Hong Kong is actually worse, I guess, because they, they used to be more in Hong Kong. 
So there's not enough stun guys. So that, that's why the Dali always call Tanigaki and Tanigaki brings from J- people from Japan over to Hong Kong. So they can't find a stuntman in Hong Kong, you know. So so that it's kind of sad to see that, you know, the Hong Kong used to be a number one in the world. You know, no one can, you know, uh, you know, compete. But now the, the you know, it's hard to find the stunt guys in Hong Kong. So so it's kind of sad. But in the in the meantime, the America is a lot of great, you know, talented stunt guys in America like these days. You know, I you know, when when you talk to these guys, oh I used to watch Power Rangers when I was a kid. I used to practice just like Power Rangers. Then you know, we used to use a wire to do the tricks and but now youngster they don't use a wire to do the same tricks because they watch our shows and try to practice and they can do it now, you know, <laughs> the crazy kids. So you know, it's kinda of like a lot of us watching Hong Kong films, uh in my my generation is that we, uh-huh. we tried to emulate the speed of Hong yeah, Kong. Yeah, films, yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, like, yeah. Kind of humanly impossible in a way yeah. because they undercranked, uh, yeah. which is a kind of unique Hong Kong trait, and none of us realize that. We also uh-huh. didn't realize that they wore pads under their clothes, so we would uh-huh. go to like Japan Action Club. We would do yeah. everything without pads. Yeah, uh, and so we ended up doing this kind of action style. It's very frantic yeah. just because we were trying to hit the same speed. Uh-huh. <laughs> From what I understand too is that in Japan they they usually don't undercrank. Is that correct with their action? No, they, no, they don't. Uh, because uh, they don't use that. They don't. They are not like similar. They they are not familiar with techniques. So I think only the us from uh, uh using Hong Kong style does it. You know, Tanigaki and Yuji Shimura and those guys. No, we do undercrank. We do use twenty two frames. Sometimes twenty one, twenty frames. It depends on the you know the thing we do. But uh, uh, most of uh, people in Japan, they don't realize that you know how to do those tricks and stuff. Because one of the reasons is that Japan, all the TV shows, they used to use the video camera, not so much the film cameras. So that uh, uh, a lot of production in Japan, uh, they use the VCR so that, uh, you know, the film only goes to 30 frames for the, for the VCR. So that they never really cared to, you know, undercrank, overcrank the film. But uh, we, you know, you know, use the film, so the 60 millimeter, 35, whichever, but we have to pick and choose camera speeds, you know, go to the undercrank or the overcrank and try to get a speed, fast speed motion or the and the slow motion and stuff. So we have from, come from background from using films, but in Japanese industries, except the, you know, bigger film, they, they used to use all the video cameras. So they never really had a culture to, you know, to learn all this stuff, I guess. Is, is there also maybe an aesthetic reason for example in chambara films why they would mm-hmm. not have sped up the film is there is there something about that perhaps where maybe there's another uh, the, reason? The, another reason i can think of is that because chambara, chambara film used to be uh one shot's quite long so that uh so that if you do 22 frames if you do a quick fight sequence it's it's okay but uh, when you do a longer take you can still feel it's a funniness because Sometimes it moves too quick and stuff, and so the uh, twenty-two films undercrank in the film only only works when it's shortcut. But uh, if it's a longer take, you know, doesn't work as undercrank because uh, you know you can a lot of times summarize film you can see that the pausing and move, then the fight, and you know it goes on and on and on. If you shut down twenty-two frames, fight stuff looks good, but the other part looks funny. So I see. Yeah. Did you undercrank uh, Power Rangers? Oh yeah, 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 Power Ranger, yes, of course. Especially the guy in the costume, because they don't move as fast as you know without the mask. So, so it, 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 the mask slow you slows you down. So you have to undercrank all the time. Yeah. What inspires you today? What are you watching? What are you playing? Ah, uh, I watch everything. I watch everything because, uh, uh, you know, a Korean film and you know Chinese film, also American films. Uh, I watch everything. I quite like Chad's, you know, uh, works because the uh, uh, John Wick and all the movies because of, uh, he used all the, you know, real fight techniques with a nice amount of CGI. You know, he doesn't, you know, do over CGI, but uh, you know, he used a light amount of CG to 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 sort of uh, uh, add flavor to the fight sequences and stuff. So you know, I, whenever I watch his films, like, wow, this is you know good stuff. You know, I feel that I always watch. Yeah, uh, Kenji's Tanigaki's film also, then you know all my friends' film because uh, you know I making sure what these guys are doing and also update myself and stuff and so. Do you um do you take any inspiration from Japanese wrestling? Uh Japanese wrestling uh sometimes, but uh, uh you know like uh, the you know the Tiger Mask the first one. 
uh, when the Sayama Satoru was used to do the Taiga was back when I was a kid, you know, he was super good. You know, he's he's fast, he's got a lot of techniques and all the stuff. And I got a lot of uh, influence from his his techniques and stuff. But the professional wrestling was that, you know, I do watch it sometimes, but not so much com- combined to the uh, film fight itself. So, uh, so what, uh, what advice do you have for people wanting to get into the action business in Japan? Mm. Uh, in Japan is that, uh, you know, uh, hmm, advice is that uh, you really have to like the, doing that action or doing the stunts uh, because uh, uh you know it looks flashy it looks kind of cool but if you if you just only for that you know it's very very difficult business it's very you know sort of a tough business so that uh, you can't really do it just because it looks cool you know you have to really like in it so you have to sort of commit yourself to you know <clears throat> so like, you know my i mean i i don't want to say entire life but you have to sort of commit yourself you know as far as you have to dedicate yourself to train yourself and keep yourself you know nice no no you know keep yourself nice and healthy and stuff and but you have to really like it you have to really like the you know action or the martial arts or the action films uh sometimes that you know very difficult but i mean i feel like it's sometimes a, you know, young kids or young guys that you know uh, they want to do it, just looks cool. But if it's very tough, or oh, they don't want to do it anymore, you know, because uh, uh, that's what seems like happening in Japan. You know, if they come back and they say, okay, you have to do 100 push-ups a day, they say, oh, no, 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 if that case, I don't want to do it, you know. So They're getting so soft. We... <laughs> yes, I know, I know. Yeah, my my time the, back in the, you know, the, the 80s and 90s, and I, I didn't have choice, you know. <laughs> if my senior guy said, do it, okay, I have to do it no matter what, so. <laughs> yeah, so. we did it because we were watching you guys. And uh, we, just, <laughs> we just, there was something, um, I don't know, I, I call it, I call it like operatic. It's uh-huh. kind of like the, the, the fall. The Hong uh-huh. Kong style fall. Yeah, there's yeah. something very beautiful about it, especially uh-huh. you know, midway through. It's like yeah. you, you don't really know what's going to happen to this guy, <laughs> even though you've seen this fall a thousand times. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I've seen you know, and I can kind of predict based on yeah. the trajectory, like what the end of the fall is going to look like. But there's yeah. still something beautiful about that. Uh-huh. Uh, that's sort of like defined the '80s Hong Kong. Movie, <laughs> yes, you know? yes. I think it left a lot of an imprint on a lot of us. <laughs> um. All right, last question. Um, yeah. What's it like being a father in the mm-hmm. action film industry? I like it. I mean, you know, I'm I'm here in Japan by myself right now so that I don't get to spend too much time with the, uh, for the kids, yes. I mean, right now, my daughter, she's in New York and she's 28 years old. My son's in LA, she, he's 17 years old. So that they're both, my daughter's in the film, not film industry, but she's a, she's a dancer and choreographer. So she does a lot of commercials and music TV and she performs on the, uh, the, the theater shows and all the stuff. And, you know, the funny thing is that right now she bumps into a lot of different people. Then they, they always talk about Power Rangers because on her age, you know, she's in the, you know, almost 30 now that, that everybody watch going to Power Rangers and stuff. So that she's very proud because she can tell, oh, that's my dad did. That's my dad did and stuff. And so I'm in a way I'm sort of helping her, you know, and, Funny thing is that she did a, a commercial in New York, and she had to do a, a wire. Uh, she has to hang on a wire to drop her from uh, from a ceiling to the uh, big old sandwich and stuff. And uh, uh, so the all the wire guy said that you know the stunt guy said, "Oh, you're just a dancer, right?" And he goes, "Oh no no, my dad's a coach Sakamoto." He goes, "What?" Yeah, yeah, daughter of the coach is like, what daughter? And they started to be very, very nice to my daughter after that. So, but then they just so. dropped her, right? Because she's tough. She <laughs> but they tough. dropped her. They, they make sure it's very, very safe and stuff. So, so actually, in a way, it's kind of funny. In a way, I'm helping her a little bit just because of, uh, you know, right like now that all the guys who used to watch my show now they're, you know, handling, you know, walking on interest and stuff. And did you find that having um, children drove you in a different way? Your, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, of course, yes. Because uh, you know, uh, you know, because uh, you know, right now after you know my daughter was born, they, they, my life completely changed. You know, I used to do all this everything for myself, but now everything for my kids. You know, my daughter, my son. You know, both because uh, my main goal is that so that you know, of course making the great film and great action sequences and stuff but at the same time that you know our kids grown up in in a healthy way and in a good way and stuff 
And、uh, at the same time, I'm really happy to see my daughter's doing really well. My son's also practicing, you know, Ushu and stuff. And, you know, my sort of delight news of the day is that、uh, whenever he does practice every weekend, he s e n t me a video of that the practice of the day. I watch he's doing Ushu and stuff. And it's like, it makes me really happy. So. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping in the day sometimes that we all get to, all of our family get to work together in one film, you know, me, wife, and daughter, and son, and stuff. So, there you go. It'll be a great family <laughs> film. Mm hmm. Koichi, thank you so much for your、oh, time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, fun talking with you. Yeah, and、uh, thank you for your insights.、Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, no worries. Action Talks is available on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. Join my telegram at t.me slash Eric Jacobus. You can check out my studio at superalloyinteractive.com. My website and blog is at ericjacobus.com. And be sure to subscribe. Thank you.